man, uh, Dave, before we started the show, man, we, uh, we, we talked about A.J. Griffin because of these guys. You, you know him quite well. The sharpshooter out of Duke, someone who I, I hope falls to the Knicks at 11. But uh, talk about Griffin, man. Talk about what you like about young A.J. Griffin. Well, he's young. He's very young. He was the youngest player on the Duke starting five uh, by a couple months, actually. So he was a true freshman through and through, but he has prototypical size for an NBA wing. He's six foot six, 220 pounds, but he has a seven foot wingspan. And as we were talking about earlier, he's a sharpshooter. He was the guy for Duke as a catch and shoot guy. So every single time they had penetrate and kick opportunities, double teams, he was the guy and he worked his way into the lineup. Remember in the beginning of the year, he wasn't getting a lot of minutes. He was kind of figuring himself out, figuring out the system. Coach was, you know, letting him earn that trust. So he's a kid that obviously has a high uh, basketball IQ, great pedigree. His father played in the league for a while. His two siblings both played high level basketball, obviously at UConn and Illinois respectively. So he's, you know, he's my guy. I love him. I love his uh, pedigree. So I think that he's a guy that could help the team significantly. Um, as someone who studies, you know, shot mechanics and things of that nature, as I said, the kid shot 45% from three. What do you see in his shooting ability, you know, that that makes him so good, so efficient? He has a pure stroke. He has a pure stroke. I mean, he's been working on that. Uh, during the time, you know, everybody was in a pandemic, he spent a lot of time working out with his dad uh, down in Tampa when the Raptors were down there. So, you know, he had the ability to be around those guys and, you know, work out obviously with an NBA coach, as, you know, with your father. So that's that's a big help. That's a big yeah. benefit. But while he was down at Duke, he did a lot of stuff with his mechanics. He widened his base. I know it looked a bit unorthodox, but it actually helped him stay low to the ground so he could be able to beat his man off of the dribble just in case he was ran off of the three point line. So that type of stuff goes a long way when you're looking at a player with his uh, stature. You know, he has a strong base. So he's able to elevate on a shot. He's a great athlete. Uh, people were making uh, a big deal about the fact that his first step wasn't as explosive as it used to be. Mm. I don't necessarily think that was the case. You know, he was just taking what the defense was giving him because obviously people realized the kid is shooting 45% from three. Mm -hmm. We got to be able to take him off of the dribble and uh, take away the catch and shoot opportunities. Also, he didn't do a lot with the initial offense in terms of breaking down his man in terms of the ISO. He doesn't have, you know, the bag or he didn't show it. He has it, but he didn't need to show it too much. Obviously, when you're surrounded by those other four at Duke, he didn't necessarily need to do it, but he has it. Yeah. And, and one of the things, you know, in his workout against uh, with the Blazers, he talked about, he said people are sleeping on his defense. What do you think about his ability to defend uh, at the next level? Yeah, just, just like what we mentioned earlier, the beginning of the year, he was kind of working his way into the speed of the game. I mean, although he was a McDonald's All-American, you, you can't replicate a high-level basketball. So the fact of the matter is he was, he was getting lost sometimes on defense. He was getting caught with those backdoor screens, but that also comes with studying film and getting the reps in with those first-team guys, especially at a program like Duke where Coach K is going to be intricate in the game plan that he gives his players. It, it didn't shock me that, you know, he made the leaps and bounds that he did on the defensive end, you know, towards the end of the year. Dave, how do you, how do you picture A.J. Griffin playing alongside R.J. Barrett uh, in, for what you've seen for the next? Like we see R.J. as a guy who likes to get downhill. And with A.J., obviously the shot's going to be there to open it up, hopefully for R.J. But what else, how else do you see these guys being dynamic as a one-two punch? Uh, well, I think that his rookie year, or, you know, the initial time that he's with the NBA or whatever NBA team he's on, if the Knicks, for example, yeah, he will flourish with a guy like RJ who's able to penetrate and kick. Uh, the thing that intrigues me the most is how he can fit with that second unit as fast as they play. And RJ was able to get, you know, plugged in here and there with that second yeah. unit, which worked wonders. I mean, Obi's a great rim runner. Sims has shown that he has a tremendous ability to be a rim runner. You know, Quick, Grimes, who also those two guys can spread the floor as well, which alleviates any pressure that they're going to put on the front of the rim. So you're talking about two elite rim runners, one really great rebounder, and then two pure shooters in the corners in Grimes and Griffin. That's pretty good for a yeah, second yeah. unit. And then if he does have to get plugged in with the first, uh, first group, uh, let's take him case uh, Julius Randle is able to get double teamed, he can kick out, you know, he's able to help spread the floor. 
and Fournier, you know, the minutes that they're going to have to balance with those two. As I said, AJ can't play the three. You know, RJ has shown the ability to be a playmaker. So there's a lot of things you could do with him in the lineup that could help spread the floor. But then more importantly, he's a great playmaker as well. As I said, underrated passer, mm. you know, great with the dump offs and things like that. So I think he would be a great fit with the second unit, more so the first. But the more that he's able to play, he's the type of guy that's going to give you a solid, you know, when he finds his footing in the league, like, you know, 18 to 20 something points just off a of catch and shoot one yeah. dribble pull-ups, like just an efficient player.